Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. Hello, Exchange family, and welcome to another incredible episode of Chief Chat. Um, Chief, unfortunately, is not here with us today. He is traveling. But of course, I have one of my favorite people in the world with me, Kiana Holloman. Kiana, how's it going? Hi, Emily. I'm good. How are you? I'm so good. Um, and before we get started, I just want to thank everyone, all our viewers out there um, for watching. Thank you so much to the soldiers, airmen, guardian, Marines, sailors, and Coast Guard members, as well as military families for joining us today. Without further ado, Kiana, please introduce our incredible guest today. So today's guests are financial readiness experts. They're here today to, in celebration of National Financial Capability Month to give a military exclusive look at navigating financial success amid current economic challenges. So please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Deputy Chief of Staff G9's Financial Education Program Manager, Robin Alama Morozik, and Financial Readiness Program Specialist, Carolyn Guadarrama. I know. <laughs> so Robin and Carolyn, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you with us here today. Um, do you mind sharing with the viewers where you are both um, coming to us from today? Yeah, thank you for having us. This is super exciting. So I am actually here for once, Sunny, Joint Base Liz McCord. <laughs> so I am an active duty Army spouse. And so I actually get to be one of the great initiative pilots of going and having a full-time remote working spouse out of the Deputy Chief of Staff G9. So super excited. Yay. That's awesome. Yes. Um, also um, for me, thank you so much for having us today. That's a um, great, great honor to be on the show. And I'm joining you from beautiful Arlington, Virginia. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you so much no, we are you. so excited to have you both with us here to share your insights on finance um, with the military community. So starting with Robin, can you just tell us a little bit more about what you do in DCSG9? Yeah, so we are responsible for the oversight, development, and coordination and evaluation in support of the Army's financial literacy training and readiness program. So really what that means is we kind of monitor program performance, develop recommendations, and problem solve different techniques to really ensure optimum program achievements that really meet the standards of OSD and the Army's uh, kind of abilities to be able to get after financial well-being of our force. And we're also super personal finance nerds too. <laughs> yeah, so really what we do is we, um, we prepare the program, we monitor it, and um, make sure that we're also in compliance with the um, financial readiness programs um, requirements to assure, you know, that everybody stays in compliance and this program um, rolls smoothly and fulfills its purpose. Awesome. And so Carolyn and Robin, for those who aren't familiar, what is National Financial Capability Month? Yeah, so um, National Financial Capability uh, Month is really an initiative to raise awareness about um, financial literacy and just really make people understand the importance of, you know, being money smart, being money savvy. It's, it's really, really crucial to understand um, you know, how to earn money, how to manage your money, how to save money how to invest money and also this is something that we sometimes neglect how to protect your money you know making sure that all of this is is in check because by doing this by developing certain habits and skills you know short term and long term by doing that that will enable you to achieve a certain degree of financial wellness in the future so that's why this is very important. 
Yeah, and I'll add on to that. You know, your financial decisions greatly affect your personal life, right? But it also affects your physical and mental health. And it's especially crucial for those that are in the service because per, in case you didn't know this, there's a continuous vetting process that ties into your security clearance, right? And one of those factors that ties into it is your financial decisions, right? So for our service members, financial well-being has a direct role on mission readiness and focus. No, and to your point, what were some of the goals that your team kind of set out to accomplish for this year's National Financial Capability Month in regard to educating the military families? Oh, yeah. So we actually have quite a few, but, you know, I think not just for this month, for all months, right? We want to empower all service members and their spouses, their family members, their kiddos, right? To achieve economic security, right? And develop those healthy money habits, kind of like what Carolyn was talking about through the use of different financial technologies and services and strategies, right? And so we really wanna go in to achieve that ease and comfort by going and using financial technology or as we call it fintech and different spending plans like that's really really important to us and carolyn will talk through a couple other ones yeah and really um one of the most important thing too is really just going from receipt to tracking you know um you know keep keeping track of where your money is going and then also understand that we have so many resources available for our active duty members, for their families, but then also for other members of the family. Think, Robin just mentioned it, you know, the little ones, because it goes a very long way of children learn healthy financial habits when they're young. And this is just like with, with everything else, you know, if you learn something very early on, you will probably be in a good position to carry that on after that time as an adult, you know? So having these healthy habits in place is much, much easier than trying to break bad habits later on. And we have these resources available and we wanna make sure that people know that they are there and, you know, just grab them and utilize them. Yeah, and I just want to highlight one thing. So in addition to April being, you know, Financial Capability Month, it's also month of the military child. And so Carolyn and I are proud moms to amazing kids, right? And so they have traveled all over the world, 10 moves that we have done. They've been along the whole way. And so we just really want to go into ensure that as parents that we're setting them up for financial success and being able to go and just to create those habits that maybe that they'll go and extend years on and maybe once they join the service as well. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. And so as the month comes to an end, what are some of the key messages your team believes military families should pay special attention to moving forward when approaching their finances? And uh, we'll start with Carolyn. Yeah, so really um, what one of our key messages is, is to be pretty upstream with your finances. You know, we want to be proactive with this. We want to prepare for certain milestones before the time has come. You know, these milestones could be things like having a baby, getting married, or maybe the other way around. Um, and then some, some special military milestones, PCSing, deploying, maybe transitioning out of the military. These are all things that will happen at one point in your life, probably. So why not prepare for these things ahead of time? You know, be, be proactive instead of reactive. That will give you great peace of mind because you're not caught off guard. And then, of course, you know, that leads into our second key thing. And I mentioned this a little bit earlier already. Um, what this takes is, um, you know, a really deep look into your finances, you know, a healthy look. And you need to be honest with yourself when you're starting that, you know, because it's really key to understand where is all your money going, you know, and tracking that. Um, it's not so hard to manage your big ticket items that happen regularly every single month. 
um, your rent, you know, your utilities. That's things that happen that happen all the time. But what about those one-off expenditures that we all know so well, right? And um, how how can you track those? How can you plan for those? You know, like putting a spending plan in place, and we have a ton of additional resources that we can teach you to utilize when these expenses come up and how to react to them. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's a really good point, Karen, because when you look at those strategies, right? So I don't know about y'all, but you know, how I go and I track our spending habits is completely different than probably how you go. And that's okay, right? It's all about finding what works for you. Um, let's just say my my husband is um he just hands everything over to me receipts and all that's good i've taught him well over the last 26 years right like you just give it to me i'll hand it i got it right but as you incorporate financial technology or the fintech kind of like what we talked about it's really crucial to ensure that you are going and being so careful about predatory practices right and that you're utilizing those resources from trusted certified places like financial institutions or like Carolyn alluded to, our amazing resources that we have on our website and through OSD. The other thing I wanna go into say is just, we, we talked on this and it's just so important, but how do you feel about talking to your kids about finances? Are you confident? If you're not confident about going in talking about finances for yourself, you're probably not passing that on to your kids, right? And so we have so many great resources. One of those is through the Office of Financial Writing's Mill Spouse Money Mission. And that goes and gives great, 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 great tips for kids on how to go into learn the different skills at their age and their stage. So I have a 10-year-old and I have a 16-year-old. Believe me, I'm teaching them in two totally different ways, right? Because the 16 year old thinks that he is like the boss and he's figured it out and he's gonna get a car, he's driving and all of this. And the 10 year old is just like, please just let me play a video game, right? And he's happy about that. How I teach them is totally different, right? But if we don't have those baseline knowledge skills to teach ourselves, probably going to struggle with going and passing that on to our kids. And that attributes to kind of how we learned about finances when we were younger, right? And those are our money scripts. So were you growing up in a home where someone was going and talking very openly about their finances? Or did they keep it to themselves? Were there fights? Were there arguments? they may have gone and transferred over into your adulthood. So let's go and work to change the culture where it's okay to talk about finances. It's okay to go and to do it in a way that's gonna make it resonate to them because until it's gone and done in, this, in the primary and secondary schools, we're, we're the ones that are responsible for doing that. So let's help them out. We've got those resources to help them. No, that's great. So for service members and their spouses who are interested in taking that first step to take control of their finances, what is the Army doing to help soldiers get financially secure? Okay, so, so what are we um, not doing? I'm so excited. Yeah, go ahead, Carolyn. You want to go in first? Oh, yeah. I we have worked so last year, you know, make better and really listen to our, our stakeholders and understand what they need. I think we might be having some audio issues with Carolyn and her magical location in Arlington. Um, so I, I'll just go ahead and kind of go and chime in. So until we can get her back on. So, you know, the Army Financial Brain its program really delivers a comprehensive look at your overall financial health, right? It's so important to go and to look at it holistically. So we have free, free, unbiased, confidential financial counselors that are able to go in to help you out. So you can learn about debt management, um, credit, and includes going and getting, you know, your credit report and seeing what that looks like. 
Talk about consumer advocacy and protection, money management, saving for your retirement. If you're under the blended retirement system, guess what? You now have a piece of your retirement that you need to go in to take, you know, accountable for. So the thrift savings plan, all of these things, our staff through the various different um, trainings that they provide, the education and the counseling services can really help you go into establish those savings goals and really kind of help you regardless if you're just wanting a quick little, you know, check in or need something a little bit more in depth. Carolyn, are you able to, can we hear you a little bit more now? Hopefully, I'm sorry about my connectivity issues there. I hope you can hear me okay now. So what I was going to say earlier was that we have really tried to, you know, listen to stakeholders and see how, what, would they best learn about finances? And we're trying to meet you at this exact place. So we understand that there is a specific way to learn that works for everybody. Everybody is different. And, um, you know, that's what we recognize. That's why we're offering trainings and multiple. One of the ways is through online tools. You know, we have this great website, Financial Frontline Network, where you you can get tons of resources, information, do some, you know, some evaluations, that's how you're doing, all of that. So we're offering this if you prefer to learn this way. Also, if you prefer to sit down with somebody, we have personal financial counselors that can meet face-to-face. -face. And this can be a face-to-face -face at the desk, you know, all in the room again, like before COVID. So that's great. Or we can do this over the phone um, or the, the online. And as a last option, we also offer to come to the unit level. So this can be arranged, you know, and um, all it takes is to say, hey, we would like to have a presentation on finance, personal finance. And then this can happen, and this can happen at the motor wall. The day you room with, you know, wherever you feel like. And by the way, this is not just for the active duty members. Soul groups, you know, SFRG, all of these groups are very comfortable to financial briefs. So we really try to you to be available where best um, meet you. Awesome. Thank you so much um, uh, for that. And uh, so, Robin, so why should soldiers seek out the Army's financial readiness program as a resource? So I think we can all attest that uh, the effects of inflation are definitely hitting us, right? So we recently PCS from Maryland. We did a full personally procured move by ourselves, might I add, but a full move from Maryland here to Washington State, right? And, you know, we really thought Maryland had a high cost of living. And then we got here to Washington. So, um, and we came during a summer surge, high cost of living with um, housing crisis and all of that. So we're feeling the effects of this, right? It's getting harder to make ends meet with what we have when there's prices rising everywhere, right? So when we're going and looking at our program and we're looking at the different resources and the fact that we have these free financial counselors, they can actually go in to look at your whole situation um, holistically. And so it, I, I think Carolyn was breaking up just a little bit, but really it's trying to look at how you receive your information if you're needing it to be in person or if you're needing it to be virtual we can do all of that because we can't go into be teaching this in the same way as a one-size-fits-all so if you're someone who responds more to a virtual or responds more through a phone call or through online or in person we've got all of that available for you you know, and one thing I just want to highlight is that, you know, the Army covers this. And in fact, all the services cover these resources for free. And why is that? 
because it's part of your benefit package, right? So the same as if you're going to your primary care manager if you are sick, or maybe you're going to behavioral health because you need to go and to just check in and talk through some things, or you're going through the commissary or the exchange to save some money, wink, wink. You know, our financial readiness program is there because it's just another tool in your toolbox. It's part of your benefit package. So use it regardless if it's something that is maybe just, a, like I said, a check-in or needs to be more in-depth. Use us as one of those resources, one of those trusted resources. No, I love that. And it looks like we may have lost Carolyn, but Robin, service members are now required to actually take mandatory financial readiness training. So can you tell us more about the training model and its benefits as well? See, I told you I'd geek out on this. Yeah, I'm so excited <laughs> about this. So the National Defense Authorization Act for, for fiscal year 16, I know it's just numbers. Let's just say the law went and created the new retirement system called blended retirement system. But it also went and instituted a series of congressionally mandated financial readiness training at personal and professional points throughout a service member's career. So this is all service members. So regardless if you're an E1 or you are in O10, you have to take this training. It is congressionally mandated by law as part of common military training. And some of these, we call them milestones in the Army because we have to be a little bit different. Um, the other services might call them touch points, but they cover like professional points like promotion, permanent change of station, right? Things like that, pre-deployment, post-deployment, or personal events like marriage, divorce, and welcoming a child. So each of the services kind of have their own way of how they're going and implementing this, how we as the Army are, we offer it through distributed learning in person with one of our you know, amazing financial educators or through group training. Um, and that's something that Carolyn was talking about where they can come to unit, you can go there. But we just wanna highlight our pretty fantastic website, if I have to say. It's armiesfinancialfrontline.org. It is the Army's official financial readiness website. And soldiers can go, and all service members, because we welcome all, can go into any of our family centers and be able to get assistance. And there's our website, yay. So please go and use it. And you can actually find some financial counselors right through there. And then all the resources we talked about today are on there as well. That's awesome. Thank you so much for explaining that. That's really an incredible benefit. So definitely, if you're not using that benefit, use all the benefits and take your mandatory training, right? Um, but in addition <laughs> to what you shared today, what other resources are out there to help service members and their families improve their financial well-being? Yeah, there's so many that are out there. But, you know, one of the things that we always have to be careful of is that we're going and using those vetted resources. There are so many organizations that are out there that want to be able to go into help, but they may not always have your best interests at heart. So we have, and we showcased a few of them today, right? So our website, Financial Frontline, we have Army Emergency Relief and all the other services relief societies, right? Those are things that are a hand up, not a hand out. And they're there to be able to offer, you know, grants and loans and um, things like that to be able to help you. We also have a really great financial well-being assessment tool that really just helps you to assess where you're at now in your present, you know, kind of financial choices that you're making as well as your future. It's just great for a, one of those little check-ins to see where you're at. We're not keeping any of the data or anything like that. It's just a resource for you to have. And I have to just highlight the Office of Financial Readiness. It's OSD. They have a really great website and they also run the Mill Spouse Money Mission page. So if you're a spouse who's maybe your, your, your soldier, your service member is about to go into transition out, and you need to know, what do I need to know? Because um, that's going to affect me. What are things that I need to figure out? That's a really great website to go and to use. And then all of those resources for like the mill kids, all of that on there. And then always, Military 
one source, right? Military one source is another fantastic resource that's out there. So those are kind of the top resources that we know are vetted, tried, and true. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks so much for all those nice little plugs there for the different websites too. I know our viewers will really appreciate that. Um, so it's also been so great learning more about how financial readiness is the key, especially in terms of getting ahead in these economic um, security challenges. So before we say goodbye, Robin, where can viewers go to learn more about what your team does um, and get the assistance they need? Yeah, absolutely. So we welcome all into our centers, as always. So everyone is welcome, all service members, and who they deem as their spouses, significant others, and their immediate family members, right? So we look at economic security holistically. And so the Army stands really firm on, you know, economic security isn't just about whether you have enough money. It's also looking at whether there's military spouse employment, right? Affordable childcare, healthcare, housing, and being able to have affordable food, right? All of that is part of the package. So we just know that when we have service members who are less stressed about their financial situation, guess what? It's going to carry over into their work, right? So they're going to be happier and healthier, maybe more in their, their unit as well as their family. But when we struggle and we have those financial difficulties, it directly impacts our mission readiness. And this can go and ultimately go and lead to potential harmful behaviors. So we're trying to be preventative and kind of get ahead of it. So please, Go and if, if nothing else, you take anything away, go to financialfrontline.org. You can find all of the resources. And um, we're just so happy. And thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. Of course. Thank you. And for our Chief Chat viewers, this episode is available on YouTube for future viewing. Be sure to join us back here at 11 a.m. Central on Thursday, June 1st, when we welcome retired Special Forces veteran Scott Neal to the chat. And tune in again at 11 a.m. Central on Tuesday, June 13th, when former Fort Belvoir commander, decorated war veteran, double amputee, actor, and speaker, retired Colonel Gregory Gadsden joins the chat. Robin, thank you so much for joining us today. Please um, send our thank you to Carolyn as well. Um, it just means so much to us in the military community um, for you giving us some time today to discuss it. Uh, discuss financial, right? I learned some things today too, because I always thought I was good at it, but I'm like, maybe I'm not as good as I think I am. <laughs> but um, we really appreciate it. And um, if you don't mind just hanging on until after the show is over, so Kiana and I can say our formal goodbyes. Um, but until then, Kiana, I'll let you do it on behalf of Chief, how he says goodbye. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching. Chief Chat out. Yeah.